Oh, hey there! What do you say there, world? Welcome to the Races Recap. I am one of your hosts, Justin. I'm Diana. <laughs> and I'm James Earl. If you don't know what you're going to say. I never know what I'm going to say when I start. Well, you know what you're going to say is, hey there, what do you say there, world? Yeah, yeah. after that, I just wing it. And then uh, we're here to talk about Amazing Race Canada, season four, episode two, which is causing a little controversy in the race world and i'm looking forward to really getting into this really? episode what controversy i'm missing i know episode. i was like oh. what i missed oh. I, have get, I have to get my notes oh go get your notes since you weren't uh here last week yeah i'm just getting my hair did priorities hashtag priorities <laughs> <laughs> so welcome party people uh i know a lot of people have been asking if we can get some canadian racers i honestly to be honest with you i don't think they have the same privileges that the social media cast have but i will make a full push next week to see if we can get one of the canadian racers not next week oh actually not next week because we'll probably take a week off next yeah week. we'll be away in morocco so sorry people so, Justin would do the show from Morocco, but I'm telling Diana you, no, we're me. not doing the show from Morocco. So, well, there'll be no Sunday show. There will be no Thursday show. Sorry. We'll be in Morocco, but stay tuned to our Facebook page because we will be broadcasting live via Facebook. Yes, that we will do. Also, right here, if you could scan this, we will be broadcasting via Snapchat. So if you want to check out the fun. Did you personalize that? Is that what you wrote? Jim, come on. Filters make you me sexy. To, do you have to ask? You could get these uh, for five bucks for charity. Every dollar goes to charity if you want one, or three. I'll send you three for five bucks. Every dollar goes to charity. I'm not keeping any. James, all the funny thing is, Justin earmuffs is like we'll walk Cooper around the neighborhood, and I will find like random stickers on the back of stop signs in our neighborhood. Bless, bless, <laughs> bless. <laughs> Hey, it's branding. <laughs> All right, let's get to the Amazing Race Canada. What did you think overall of the episode as a whole? First, uh, first look, first glimpse. What are you talking? Just I like it. Okay, good it's, episode. It's, a, it's solid. Solid. There episode. were some really interesting things that I liked about the episode, and I loved the finish line. I love me a good foot race. Oh yeah, I oh. know. We were talking about that too. I mean, I know we're jumping right to the end, but like cab drivers will make all the difference. No, I love all it. the difference and the cab driver for Rita and Yvette you could tell that he was like in he said he was in I'm the race get with him. them I'm yeah get him. like he, he was he was in it he was trying to get it and he just pulled ahead at that last minute all right like, I, know. I know that's what I said I, I thought it it was a good leg overall I thought there were some flaws as a, in leg design but I thought it was entertaining and uh a, the racers made it fun so let's get to it we're gonna start off in the beautiful Canadian Rockies uh, I know I'm probably a stupid American who didn't know how far the Rockies went up into Canada. They go up uh, into Canada pretty far. So. I didn't know that. So. I didn't either. I, I can't pretend that I did. We're ignorant <laughs> Americans, what can we say? All right, so here's some interesting things. I got the times here. I know, uh, James, oh, you usually have these, so I didn't know if you were doing it for Canada. But I know uh, Jillian and Emmett, they left at 12.56, and the next team was at uh, 50 minutes behind them. So they – they won that leg by, almost by a an lot. Hour. And there's a there's another a major dap coming up here right after second place team too. Oh, okay. So you did write it down. So yeah, I didn't write it down, but I, I I paid attention to them. So the second and third place gap was at, uh, almost three hours between second and third place. So three hours. So yeah, completing that first task on your first try was um, was very important because everybody that didn't was at least three hours behind. And the last place team six hours behind first place is that is that was that, with the penalty though okay that's yeah. what i thought and it's four that's hours with a right? four hour penalty with it's the not four quite hour. as bad if you back it up one more spot right well but if, if all right so the last two teams that finished with the four hour penalty because two teams took that four hour penalty finished at 629 and 656 right there was a team that finished at 627 that means with the four hour penalty they only beat one of those teams by two minutes you kidding me? Four hours? Anyway, let's get to it. I don't want to insult the racists because I know some of them are watching now. <laughs> All right, root info. Head to Calgary, Alberta, Canada with two express passes. We'll be waiting, hanging there up for grabs. James Earl asking you 
If you are one of the first two teams to get there, are you going for that express pass? If I know that I have a very safe buffer, then why not? As long as I'm not going to get eliminated doing it, those express passes can make the difference. And I'm talking from personal experience. <laughs> like that express pass can get you a win. Um, I can't say it got me a it saved me from elimination, but it definitely got me a win. So yeah, I, if I had a nice little buffer, I'd go for it. Now, do you think the only reason that they went for it is because they had that deal with the other team? Like, if we get it, we'll give it to you. If you get, so, you kind of have you double your chance of. Do you double your chance? Yeah. Yeah. You don't. You, you yeah. don't. Or you, well, you double your time. Like you right. speed up the time by like twice. Right. Um, I think that was a nice incentive, but you notice that like once they started, they were going for it, like no matter what. Like right. they weren't even up. They were finding it before they left. Yeah. Well, because because you don't want to waste your time being there and 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 leave Not without finding it. Right. How do you feel about uh, three buses heading out? Do you think that's enough separation? Do you think that three buses with pre-schedule was okay? Because their travel seems to be all pre-scheduled for them. Um, I, I, so far. Did it say how far apart they were? the buses were? Cause it didn't say. It did. Just um, three buses. So this I mean, it splits teams up. I liked it. It's better than two buses. Um, yeah. I have no strong feelings on that. That didn't really didn't perk my ears up when I saw it. What about heading to City Hall to see one of uh, the – Best mayors in the world. I think that's pretty cool. Mayor Nietzsche. So based off the response from the a lot of the racers, they seemed like really impressed with it, especially uh, Jewel and Lau. Um, yeah. Julian Lau, sorry. Um, they they really were excited. I'm pretty sure that someone's like ran up and gave him a hug. Yeah. Yeah, he seems like a celebrity. I think it's kind of an honor to meet somebody that's like the best mayor in the world. I mean... I think that's pretty Oh, cool. yeah, definitely. I mean, and you know, one of those things where I'm, like, I'm not the best mayor in the world. I was going to work in radio in Calgary, so I did a lot of research on that area, and that area is beautiful. That's one of the reasons why I did my first uh, leg there uh, when we created the fake Amazing Races. All right, so let's get into it. The mayor hands you a photo of a sculpture. It's the Wonderland sculpture. I like these type of clues where you got to do a little bit of figuring out. If there's no people around, you, get a, you have to figure it out on your own or a cab driver. So I like the picture clues. What do you guys feel like picture clues? I like picture clues. I had picture clues in my own leg of the race because okay. I like it. Can I say one issue I had, and this is part of this episode, and I know Canadians are going to like rip me a new one when I say this, <laughs> but Canadians love to keep the race in Canada. And I think I've explained a few episodes ago why – why I've, from my understanding why they do that but here's the issue is what happens is and i think this happened with the the father uh, daughter team is when they got the clue she knew immediately what it was where it was how to get there what's the fastest route and i hate it i hate when like you have that like pre-knowledge right like home field I, advantage almost no yeah but i just don't i don't like it i like when everyone's out of their comfort zone and everyone's struggling and looking around and who's the most resourceful Whether than whether rather than like oh I know this city this is like my city right kind of like when you know you're going to your hometown for the finale in Tar America right no no like I have major issues with that and I think it's happened in the past a few times granted I I don't think it necessarily Dave wins in those situations but it's still like. If I'm going to New York against y'all, I'd be pissed. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, well, the only pre- team not New York, uh, Philly, sorry. Yeah, either oh, way, yeah. the only team that went in their home state was... Uh, um, Beekman Boys. What? Beekman Boys. Yeah, the Beekman Boys. And they're like from upstate New York, and they were they won in the city. So, I mean, that's totally hundreds of miles away. So, I, it, it can be an advantage, but well, I, it's them, also a disadvantage. Because in the first season with uh, Frank and Marguerite, if he would have just trusted the cab driver, they would have won. But instead, he gave the cab driver his own directions because he knows he knows New York better than a cab driver, and his cab so. his cab took him and took the long way, and they lost. So sometimes the uh, home field advantage is not an advantage. But I I hate that what you're saying. He knew exactly, saw the photo, knew exactly where it was, and that yeah. is an advantage. Like I like the idea of having a photo because we had that in the Netherlands, and it was like you know, yeah. you have I nothing to go by, cool. like. You know, you need somebody to know what that is before you can even start to research it. You can just red boat. I mean, you probably could, but it's the big red it boat. Yeah. Work. Yeah. All right. So now we head. We get to the Wonderland sculpture, which I, what this I like about this as well, because the sculpture is is not in the same place as this tower where the where the um, roadblock is. So they run to the roadblock. Who wants to seize control? Or who wants to reach for new heights, as John Montgomery said it. So I don't know how it was worded on the clue. So they have to head to the Calgary Tower, rappel down 58 stories, find the mascot, and get the next clue. Simple, very linear task. Uh, 
um, adrenaline, cool. I wish there was some sort of skill involved. Um, other than yeah, that, it's kind just, of like I've been done a million and one times on the race, but it's a height thing. Like they just had a height thing on the like the before. first leg. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of heights on this so far. Well, like I get that heights are a big fear, but make it where you have to collect puzzle pieces like on your way down and then spell oh, yeah. something or out. Find or, something on your right, way down, right. and if you don't, you got to go do it again. Right. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I was I was underwhelmed. I'm pretty sure everyone got. Everyone that got there left in the same order. Nothing major change, except right. for um, Rita and Yvette, who got really, really lost. Yeah, so this they was a struggle led for them. <laughs> this is the last leg was a struggle leg. They they have not problems. as bad. Yeah, not as bad. But so they get to the sculpture and and they're running around the place where the sculpture is, not knowing to just look up for a tower, which is you know, like four or five blocks away. It's just common sense. Sometimes it's not that common. <laughs> Michael Harmston said, Welcome to Tar Canada, where every task is dance or heights. <laughs> so we're two for two for the first two episodes. There were fish. There were fish this episode. Be yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Kristen is catching up to Emmett, and as soon as she starts to catch up to Emmett, her line jams. That's the only drama that happens in this task. And it wasn't even that much drama. I was like, ooh, what's going to happen now? But then nothing happens. <laughs> yeah. So and the next task was make your way to the beatnik bus. And you have to oh, find. Oh, sorry. One more thing. Sorry, so sorry. I interrupted you. Um, I thought uh, it was either Anne or Tanya. Seeing into her son was so sweet. Was oh, yeah. It was during oh, that I challenge. So I just want to mention that. That was no, such no. a sweet moment. Oh, wait. I kind of. All right, so this is so random, but uh, her son, Michael, right? Is that his name? I don't remember his name. I'm I sorry. Don't know. But the very first picture they showed of him, if anybody watches Big Brother Canada, he kind of looked like John Party. <laughs> John Party, yeah, from Big Brother from Canada. Big Brother Canada, too. I look <laughs> random. Like, that looks like a like a baby picture for John Party. But I guess a lot of people who watch Amazing Race Canada watch Big Brother Canada, so it was a little crossover. So who would have done this task? Diana, you would have probably... I would have done it. I would have... I don't think you or Mama would have had a problem with this task. Either. Oh, neither of us would have. I would have been scared, but yeah. I would have done it. No, Mama and I can handle heights like no problem. That's not our thing. Uh, your mom was pretty scared at the bungee jump. But she did. But she, she, did, like, she yeah. didn't even hesitate. Well, that's the funny thing. It's like people think now because I have jumped off a bridge and jumped off a platform into water that I'm no longer like terrified of heights. No, I'm still, I'm still very scared of heights, but I'll do it. I said to Justin, like, I would have been asking, are you sure this is strapped in? Are you oh sure that God, this is... Yeah, a million and one are you sure it's buckled in? Now, this is an interesting task from here. You have to make your way to the Beatnik bus, and you have to find it using social media. This is something that I thought they would have done in the past uh, social With media Social season. media task. That would have been interesting, well, an interesting cool. twist of using social media. But I enjoy it. I could see that it's them trying to really push social media and get it into the show. I didn't mind it. Some people online hated the the, the force of pushing, but I like. Oh, is this the controversy? Is that what you're talking about? No, we'll get no, to that. Yet. Okay. So, yeah, I like I'm it. I for this challenge. Yes. Like this is probably my favorite challenge of the episode of all of them. I think this is my favorite because it's a moving target. Yes. Like it's something it's you actively have to be working on, or you miss your window. And I it love it. It was a root info, right? It was a root info. Yeah, it was just a root yeah. info. Well, yeah. I did like how it changed, and I wonder, was it like five minutes that they ten minutes. ten minutes? Yeah. Um, that's and that's one thing I think Canada has on our seasons is they do a lot of little challenges like this where it's a lot of root infos. Yeah. Um, that I think kind of separates Canada from the uh, from the U.S. Uh, in that way, and I really really appreciate it. Yeah, I definitely like the tasks and more and more tasks on root info. It helps you know for a little parody, changing things up a little bit. And Turquoise Star 17 just said Rita and Yvette made that task. And I'm assuming he's talking about when they just hit the like help button. Was that like calling the police? I don't understand what that thing was. <laughs> it, it, it probably was like one of those emergency boxes where you press a button and they're just like, okay, I had two problems with that. One, read your clue again, just reread yes. it again. And two, ask other people. They asked this random guy who had a guitar who wasn't set up. He looked like a hobo trying to like walking around with a guitar. And they're like, are you playing? He's like, yeah, I play the guitar. It just seemed like they're so out of it. They're not really thinking. They get really frazzled. I don't really see them making it far. <laughs> they're going to have a lot of issues along the way. I unfortunately have to agree with you on that. Um, the, unless they get their mind 
right, they're going to struggle because they're, they're, they're in frazzled mode and that's the worst thing. And it's hard not to get into that mindset when you're in the back of the pack. Yeah. I've been there. But the moment you start getting frazzled and you stop, stop reading the clue is the day you're going to like put your nail in the coffin. I think there was a, a, a little thing that I don't, not many people picked up, but they had 837 Instagram followers when it aired at the time of this podcast. There is 1,143, so they gained about 300 new followers after the airing, if, cool. anybody, if anybody cares. <laughs> Follow Beat Nick Bus on Instagram. <laughs> I wonder what it does when it's not on the amazing race. Like it just like if it just goes around. It sells records. It says it has five hundred records on the place, and I guess you know they play music. It's a uh, very Canadian, I guess. So uh, this seemed uh, a good task, the best task of the first two episodes, I think, as far as design uh, and, and it being well thought out and and being different from any other se- any other task really that we've seen on any other season anywhere. So I like the creativity that Canada brings. Uh, that's something that uh, I want the Amazing Race America to do a lot more, more creativity and doing things that are um, different. It's 28 seasons, have some fun with it, besides casting uh, stunts. All right, so now it comes to the part. How do you feel about this Relay Express Pass? Now the Relay Express Pass is just like in our season where they have to give it away after, before the fourth leg so what do you think about the Relay Express Pass? Do you like that thought? Or? I um, Go ahead. You had, you, had, you had your more form thought, Anna. Go ahead. Well, no, please. My thoughts are not complete. But, I mean, it's just like, I mean, I think it's a good way to help alliances, you know, form or make a little drama between teams. It definitely with the drama, and if it wasn't for the Relay Express Pass, there wouldn't have been a, you know, the whole drama on our season. So it caused a lot say, of drama. Yeah, like look at what it did to our season, and we didn't even really get to that drama with uh, Amazing Race Canada. But for our season, like it really caused people to say, or it caused Tanner and Josh to almost use it to their advantage and say, "If you guys can do this, then we'll give this to you." It was a storyline for six yeah. legs of the race. Yeah. So. Um, the one thing that I think would have been a little cooler with this is if they weren't together, like, let's say you find one and there's still another one missing in the box. So like, you have to search for two instead of one. Um, but that's just being me and nitpicky. Um, can we talk about though, when they were discussing when Evan and, uh, Jillian and then uh, Steph and Kristen were discussing it. And I don't know who it was. It was either Steph or Kristen, but I couldn't see their face. You can tell, but they're like, do the deal, 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 So uh, <laughs> that. Yeah. They made the deal, but you know what? What, what surprised me is that Evan and um, Jillian. Jillian did not know that there was a, a detour. Like they only saw the express pass clue and got in the cab and left and went. And while they were in the cab, they noticed the detour clue. Like, how do you miss a whole clue? Doesn't the envelope say detour, and then like underneath that, it, it w- had. The express pass. When they showed yeah, oh, like, yeah, the close-up yeah. of right. it, they opened it up, and then underneath it showed the express pass option. Um, I, 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 I don't know. It's hard for me to be like judgmental because I know those race blinders, like they happen. They are a real thing. Like race <laughs> blinders are a real thing, people. Um, I, I don't know what to say to that. Uh, they just completely just. Uh, forgot about it and then once they realized it, I think once they realized it they made a smart decision that got them the win it got them the win but yeah. it, you know it's going to get them a loss later because that express pass is probably going to be used to pass them and the second express pass will probably be used to pass them again so in your head it's like you're trading off that one win for possibly two losses I don't know although I mean Julian and I came in first both legs I don't know that they necessarily need Neither. it so I feel like that's going to be a good case for um, Steph and Kristen, Kristen, Kristen to, to not give it to them now. Oh, they like, better. They came they in, better well, not. yeah, they better not. They but. better. I'd be furious if they give it to them after that. They need to give it to some other team. Get rid of Jillian and Emmett because that's their only competition right now. As far as oh, I, I disagree with you on that. I think there's another team that's sneaking in there. Oh, I think I know who it is, and uh, we'll talk about it. <laughs> 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 All right. So we get to the point where we got the detour. It's a sim or swim. And you also got the uh, relay express pass. So you can go for the express pass. And this is at Canada Boy Vinyl. You have to search through 13 crates of records to find the 
Express Pass hidden in between two records. Now, if you don't find the clue, you have to sleeve each and every record. So they wind up taking them over an hour and eight crates before they found it. But um, Kristen and Stephanie found the Express Pass. Uh, Jillian and Emma were on their way there. They found the clue in the cab and said, eh, we're going to go to the detour. So the detour is sim or swim. You could do a computer simulator for one of the skyscraper construction cranes to learn how to use that. Uh, so it's like a really intricate video game. Or you could go and do some swimming with the fishes. Uh, go to a fish hatchery and you have to corral thousands of fish and then pick them up in a net and put them inside another little bin. And if you could do that, you move on. Which one would you have picked, Diana? Um, I would have wanted to do fish because one, it's an animal and I always want to pick animals. But two, I think because and the clue said that you don't have any training, you have to teach right. yourself. Yeah, I wouldn't have. Like, yeah, okay, it's like a video game and stuff, but we did the sim, and even with instruction, which was bad instruction. The worst instruction yeah, ever. Yeah, the instruction didn't even help us. Um, I feel like, the, you know, the fish is a, is an easy thing to kind of do and get done. Yeah. Time-wise. I would have wanted to do the simulator because I thought video games, but I wouldn't have pushed for it, so I, we probably would have done the fish. What about you, Jane Joe? Mom and I would have done swim in a heartbeat. I, we still have PTSD from that other simulator. <laughs> it was a bad lead for us. We don't want to relive that. Um, okay. But um, I, anything that you should try to power through, like physically, I'm more into than trying to like figure out a, like a mechanical system. It just that seems like trouble to me. Yeah, like if it was not a simulation, I might have given it a like. I'm that be like, oh, I've always wanted to do that. So the thing that would have got me is it says like to do it in under six minutes. So in my head, it's like if you do it right, you do it in six minutes. If you do it kind of okay, you do it in twelve. So it's like it's going to take more than twelve minutes to do the other task in my head. So yeah, that would have been the rationale. That. I don't think like that. Yeah, that would have been that's, the rationale. That's actually a very fair point. So that's the only reason that I would have kind of, and I'm like, video games are good at, but it's, again, it's power through it or use some skill. And I like it when it's separated like that. A specific skill to get you through quicker if you got it, or power through it, and all you got to do is have heart and determination, you're going to finish. Well, that's what, like Jenk said too, that the thing with it was that both both people needed to complete the simulation thing. Yeah, that, that so definitely made a difference. It's not like you can just have one person do it and do it quickly. Four teams went to the simulator. Right, and only three of them switched. Only Joel yeah. and Ash, and only Joel and Ashley really finished it. So, it seemed like it was really daunting for everybody when they first got there. Uh, and the fish hatchery was the popular one. Do you know the placement of them when they got to the simulator, and then the placement where they finished? Like, if if, if anybody passed to, anybody on the simulator, like if it I, mattered to them that they stayed. I'm pretty sure they left in fifth and ended up in, like they got to the simulator in fifth and ended up in fourth so i think they passed but only because teams were switching right right okay so now at the fish hatchery which I, was the most popular one there was a little bit of drama with jill freaking out like don't yell at me slow down oh my god we'll she's just that. so like uh, but yeah she's definitely uh, worse. she's doing an awful lot at it yeah, well, so far for sure. She's getting it worse than Logan at it, that's for sure, so far. So, so Jill freaks out a little bit. Frankie and Amy get in there and do a great job. I think Stefan and Antoine went in there and killed it, did another great job. Rita and Yvette went in there, beasted it, did Sorry. a great job. Harmstone said, Julie and Lowell were at the swim for hours. And then he said, I think he said three and a half hours to do swim. That's nuts. That's that is a long time, but they, I mean, a lot of teams would, passed them. You remember like Kristen and them passed them and they went to the Express Pass. Right, too, and, and the way that they did their nets, they had like corralled them all to where the nets were and then they were hiding under the yeah. thing. But three and a half hours, that's a long time. Yeah. It's a really long time. I didn't like Stefan and Antoine's strategy and the way they, they were passing it, but they hustled. They had a lot of heart and, and beasted it, but I didn't like their strategy I don't think it was strategy. I think they messed up the direction that they corralled the fish. Yeah, and that's their was. strategy. They didn't think it out. Uh, just like um, Kelly. And they weren't the worst, though. I'm telling you that much. Kelly and Kate, like, they corralled themselves in with the fish, which was funny, and then had On to... On the other side of the pond. Climb over a wall, and it's just no thought process at all. But here's the thing that's crazy, too, is, like, if they had just... I think they would have used less time just pushing the fish to the other That's side right. than like getting in and out of the pond. Yeah, if you had like, okay, say they're back here and you have to take them here, just 
move both the gates back around and yeah. re-corral them. It just seemed like it was crazy to me. But this is, sorry, this is where I wanted to put Jillian in check. I'm just Go gonna call it. her out now. Um, again, a lot of people are saying like, maybe Jillian's getting the Dana edit, the Logan edit, the Haley edit of the, you know, rah, 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 just ragging on your partner. Um, yeah, right now she's the only one I'd put in check. Frankie and Amy, and Amy they had a little bit back and forth, but. but they fire an ice. Where did they have that? Like in the, in she's the like, con. She's like, don't, she's like, don't be tippy with me or yeah, snippy with like, me. Yeah, she's I like, I am not being yeah. snippy. You all call to be a snippy. It, it, it was quick, but. But, like, so far, Jillian's two for two in the edit. That is what I will say. The edit is uh, needs to be put in check. So it, it came down to uh, the final two was uh, Kelly and Kate and Rita and Yvette, who both switched from the other task. Rita and Yvette getting to this task last, but beasting it. And because of Kelly and Kate's poor strategy, they get passed up in this, in this part of the leg. And uh, that is the race for last place. The race for first place is coming down between Jillian and um, Emmett and Stefan and Antoine, who... You're going you're gonna to stop hating on at some point. I think this is I a have, much yeah, better like, than we gave credit for. Oh, for sure. But I mean, that they, they didn't haven't shown anything. Like, the strategy was poor for, for what they did. They just did it very well with poor strategy. So uh, they have a lot of heart and determination, but skill and thought... Like the thought process of not there. This doesn't make sense, Justin. They did yeah. it very well with poor strategy. Right, because if there were other teams who had better strategy, they wouldn't have done as well. But there was a lot of teams with poor strategy. But I, I just think that I think they did well. They, they're doing better than I thought they'd be doing it. That's for sure. But I don't, I don't look at them as a serious contender yet. I see. I do. I see them as. What like, do you see? What do you see about them that you think they're a strong team? The I don't know. Here's Finish the thing. Second? I, I just. I see good teamwork. I, I've heard, I'm, I don't know. I'm trying to see in a lot of me and mom in them, and I hate seeing people hate on them. I really do because me and mom were doing this well too at the beginning of the race, and the whole time people were like, God, this team sucks. They're not going to make it far. They're not going to do anything. And I just don't like that because let's recognize they came in third and second. They have the second best average of any team currently in the race. <laughs> That's true. That no, it's true. They, they're doing well. They're surprising me. That's for sure. I wanted to pull out two things. <laughs> Michael Holmstone that just said they have half they have half of your average after two leads. <laughs> uh, uh, was he talking to me about y'all or mine? I think he's talking about mine because we had ninth in yeah. first leg. Oh well, but um, I really loved uh, Lowell's uh, fish puns. Lowell uh, and Julie, they were like, "Oh, I'm really I'm not hooked on this task." That or, caused a lot of Twitter con uh, not controversy, a lot of tweeting going on with a lot of puns. After he started that, people were just punning after punning. Yeah, what was the name of the episode? Who got the episode? I didn't even know. It was the deal. It was the deal comments. Oh, Whoever, okay. whatever girl said the deal comments, that's who got the title of the episode. Oh, yeah, I didn't write that down. And then um, my other note was that I love the Ashley and Joel story about how Joel's not really her dad and. Her father left when she was four months old, and you know, after the after her mom and Joel started dating, Christmas she asked him like to be her dad, and he, he said yes. You know, it seemed really dad. sweet. It was really sweet because they have a really cute relationship, and I just I like how they kind of reveal those things along the way. How close do you think Jillian and Emma and Stefan and Antoine were to each other? Oh, I'm gonna guess twenty four minutes. About tw about twenty about a half hour. How about you? Think about half hour or longer. Um, I'd probably say right about there, 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to guess it was over an hour. Over an hour? I disagree so yeah, I disagree. much. Just because of their strategy. They were literally pat. I didn't, at that, and they were dropping fish every time they did it. So they had to, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see who's right. We'll see right. We'll find out next week. <laughs> All right. So the first place team wins five night trip uh, from hotels.com to Paris. Patty, Patty, wee wee. Uh, so Jillian and Emmett go two for two. Stefan and Antoine surprising people finishing in third and second and the, for this leg. And then Frankie and Amy, another surprise team, jumping up there finishing in third. And I think that all of these people finished because Steph and Kristen took the, obviously took the hard road and obviously sacrificed the top three finish to get the express pass. So Frankie and Amy, so this, this was a time for the other teams to shine. So Frankie and Amy definitely impressed me as well. Uh, Joel and Ash, uh, Anna and Tanya, Steph and Kristen, Julie and Lowell, and then the final two, 
which came down to a better cab driver who was into the race, who even though that Kelly and Kate finished before them. Like a minute, though. Yeah, a minute. The cab driver made up the difference. And if you notice, they pulled up to the they pulled up to the place. Kelly and Kate stopped here. And his cab driver went right by. Their cab driver went right by, dropped them off at the set other entrance, and then the foot race went in. They both went in two different doors. Yeah, they went in two different, they went in two different doors. doors. Like, but you could see them on the stairs how close they yeah, were. Yeah, they were really here's close. A, here's the thing that I'm going to criticize. I'm going to criticize Kelly and Kate because – you know you're you know you're at the back of the pack. Like you should have no doubt you're at the back of the pack. When you're on that taxi like taxi ride, you need to be alert. You need to be looking around. You need to be ready. They were they were just like sitting there, and it wasn't until like Rita and Event took off that they even noticed them. Like right. like you need to be aware if you're at the back of the pack because this easily could have been an elimination, and that would have been it for you. Yeah. Well, that's... that was my note. I said Kelly and Kate should have gone home. Like one last week for making the decision to take the four hour penalty, but they survived by the skin of their teeth because somebody else was as dumb as they were to take the four hour penalty. But they just lucked out with the non elim, and I feel like, you know, they're, they're just hanging along until another team doesn't make a major mistake. Isn't and they're saying, like, oh, the writing's on the wall? Yeah. The writing's right. on the wall for them. Writing's on the wall for them, but they, uh, they lose the foot race, but it's okay because it's a non elimination. The second leg, how do you feel about having a non-elimination in the second leg? Well, here's the thing. You realize we're going to have four non-eliminations if there's 12 legs, right? Like, every third hey. leg should be a non elim Could only be 11. Have we checked the IMDb? Could only be 11 legs this season. I don't know if they will have I that. Think last time, I think when I looked, there's supposed to be 12, so I really do think there's going to be four non elims Or a final four? I mean, there still should be four non elims Even with a final Wait, four? If there's a final four... Uh, no, if there's a final four, it should be five non limbs then. You're adding more people to the finale. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, all right. Let's say I'm one. I'm what an idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Numbers aren't your game. Numbers are my game. Well, I'm not counting. Michael Armstrong, right. Zachary Bush, they're all saying it's 12. Well, we'll check it. IMDB, the official yeah, source, the Internet Movie a, Database. Episode, they have episode one. They're not even up to date. <laughs> um, so I think there's going to be a lot of non limbs this season. Um, well, yeah, according to Harmstone, every other leg is going to be a non uh, elimination you, unless there's a double non eliminate back to back. <laughs> Sorry, somebody just said math teacher James Earl. <laughs> Except I'm a doctor. <laughs> yeah, but you got to be good at math. You got to measure like CCs and stuff, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Got to know how to convert your CCs. And I got the whole uh, idioms writing on the wall. So in the English Ooh, language. Michael Harmston, I like this fun fact, and I have no idea if this, if this is right. I'm just reading it. Unless we have a bat-to-bat non-elimination lead, we only have one more consecutive pair of eliminations left all season. Well, we'll see how it goes. Amazing Race has a fun way of surprising you. I just hope that they bring back my favorite twist uh, was the face-off. I hope they have it again this season. And I hope that uh, Amazing Race America brings back the face-off, or brings the face-off to America, where two teams have to face off to each other. And the only way to move on from that task is to beat another team. If you don't win, you have to wait for somebody else to show up. And if you're the last one there, you take a penalty and then go. So I, I'm looking forward to one of those. I'm hoping to see one of those. Can I say how shocked I was that Rita and Yvette um, cheered when Kelly and Kate were not a limb? It was kind never, of like a... I never cheered. Yeah. I always cheered when it was for us, not for other people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This I don't is... know that... Like, you could tell they were kind of like, oh, oh God. Why? Yeah, it's kind of awkward, I guess, when you're right there. Like, oh, that's really great for you guys. Like, oh, God. We were supposed that's to not to awkward. Do. What's awkward is being on the mat when someone's eliminated. That's awkward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, we've seen it. Oh, yeah. So, well, oh, yeah, yeah. With uh, Kristen and Tiffany. Oh, Kristen yeah. Tiffany. That was really that was... bad. Oh. Tough. That that was the worst because like we we, yeah we got close to them like the leg before the airport before so we were kind of like rooting for us but rooting, rooting for, for us meant, meant yeah. like uh, it was just bad for both of us like we're just hoping it's not eliminating to save both of us but next week they're heading to Vietnam where they're gonna have a crazy so good chickens. Yeah. They got frogs that the girls are freaking out. The speed they got bumps. coconuts. They got coconuts. They got Tanya. Looks like she's fainting. It looks like there's a lot of drama in this third episode. Uh, either way, it's a great edit on the commercial. So I'm really looking forward to this. I love when the animals get involved. Especially I love the teasing of the, uh, the language barrier. 
Yes, and language barrier, definitely something that you don't see too much in the Canadian episodes because they don't go anywhere besides, you know. Um, awkward C in the chat room is going to Vietnam next week. That's pretty cool. Nice. Well, there you go. There was a lot of controversy the last time America went there, but I, I don't think... Uh, controversy, you love that word. What's the controversy? Canada has uh, the same controversy. Well, because they showed that plane that got shot down. It was like an American plane that got shot down, and they showed that as like one of the... Places. Oh, when I like the teasers? Like, oh, right. No, not in the teasers. It was like part in of the episode. task. In the episode, uh, it was like part of the task. This is, you know. So there was, was the controversy of this Canadian episode, by the way, because I missed it. Yeah, I missed it too. <laughs> <laughs> it's just hype. I'm hyping stuff up. No, the, uh, the, just about uh, Jillian getting uh, the bad edit because she was supposed to be like the big brother, so they're trying to Yeah, but push somebody towards commented too that she edit. was like that on Big Brother, so. No, that's what I mean. Like, because she was like that on Big Brother, like they're making sure that she gets that same kind of edit in this season. Yeah, but you're on Big Brother so much. It's not like they really, I mean, I don't know. They could no, be. No, this I'm could be exactly like, how she is, but I'm sure they could edit it. Like three this. episodes that if you're really not like that, they can't edit you to look a certain way. I mean, if you're on 12 episodes of one show, then yeah, they could take your worst parts, but all no, the... I understand, but that was just the controversy that they're trying to make uh, her seem just like the character, so they're giving her this, this, this edit or making it highlighting the negatives. But I think next week's going to be awesome. Really looking forward to it. I'll reach out to some of the Canadians. Uh, Racers actually got a shout out from Wayne Arthurson, who does a Wayne and Gord's recap of Amazing Race Canada. They were doing it before we have, so you should check them out. They sit in a bar and they drink beer and they talk about the Amazing Race Canada. <laughs> that sounds cool. <laughs> so uh, he said that he's going to put me in contact with some of the people, so uh, who knows? Maybe we'll get uh, some good luck and we'll have Amazing Ra Canadian Amazing Racers on uh, like we did for <laughs> uh, the American version. Anything else? Final thoughts on this episode? Oh, no, wait. Yeah, James O'Seal clap. clap. What's going my on? Seal clap. My seal clap is going to go to Stefan and Antoine on their second place finish. I <laughs> am freaking <laughs> loving this team right now. Like, I'm loving this team. You don't even know. Well, I like how you see like you and Mama D in that team. And that's how we always kind of watch. We always watch and said, well, who are we? Like, who would we be most like? And I'd say we probably like Jillian and Emmett because. Except you know, she's not like crazy like Jillian. Well, she can be. She's, she's like, you're all a reverse Jillian and Emmett. There's a little bit of me. <laughs> she has it. She just I do. Hides it. I just, she hides it pretty well. I just know when to or turn it, it, it out. Or when to turn it off. No, my, no, Justin, please. You didn't get edited out of Rotterdam. You didn't get edited out of Rotterdam where we had no, a conversation I, no, where you're like, you were like, you were like, you admit that you were wrong. And I was oh, like, yeah, and they didn't I, put that. You were like, she said, you admit that you were wrong, and then I'll admit I was wrong. And I was like, you're right. I was totally wrong about the blah, blah, blah. No, I don't remember that. How, no, I don't remember I said, I was that totally wrong about the blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, but you have to admit that you were wrong. Yeah, and then you were like, I'm not I admitting it. Wrong. No, first and of all. then they cut to the edit where they just show me saying, you have to admit you were wrong. First of all. I never agreed to admit that I was wrong because I will still say it today. Me making that decision was not wrong. It got us money. All those decisions. Hindsight is the only way you could say that. Hindsight. That's the only way. Justin. Any point right. along that race. Moving on. Um, I'm just sitting over here with my popcorn watching yeah, this. Yep. <laughs> you just came here to read the comments. Um, who is getting your super fan? This is going to be the controversy right here. The super fan move is going to Steph and Kristen for going for the express pass and not giving up once they went seven deep. They were seven deep, and they were about to give up. They stuck it through, got the express pass, and still powered through. Because Why it was it a super fan move? It would have been a waste. It would have been a waste if yeah. they left. Why was it a super fan move? Because, one, they knew they had a lead on two other buses, so they took that time to say, hey, we're going to give up winning this leg for the chance to get these express passes, get some power. Uh, I thought it was the, the move because of that. If any other people that weren't on that first bus went for it, that was the bad decision. So the first bus, I think they made the right move. They went for it. Super Michael Hornstone, he says, but the express pass is functionally useless. I disagree. Yeah. It was a trip to Slovakia. It did. Yeah. Listen, it's nine, nine, I wouldn't say nine times out of ten. Seventy percent of the time, the team that wins the Express Pass is usually a team that's in the lead anyway. So a lot of the times, those teams don't need it. So that's why he's saying it, because a lot of times people just end up not using it for its real purpose. But it, you, when you're on the race, I know I didn't have the Express Pass, but knowing you have that Express Pass gives you this certain confidence, and that confidence can change everything. 
Sometimes it can give you overconfidence, but it can also change everything. Because in our season, whether it was used properly or not, having that express pass put every team against us. Made it 10 teams against one from the first leg. Michael Harmson. Michael said a never save a team. Caroline yeah. and Jennifer, I'm just going to throw that one out there. Just going to throw that out there and let it sit and simmer. <laughs> It's definitely saved more than one team, and it's definitely taken teams and giving them a victory on a leg where they wouldn't have won. So it's been functionally useful. It can't be functionally useless. And, and, and again, you, so if it wasn't happening in all season, Josh and Tanner would have got picked up. They would have been the bullies of the season. We wouldn't have been the bullies of the season. Mm, they, I sure think they would. Yeah, because everybody would have flocked to them and been like, oh, well, I want to be your buddy. They would have flocked to us because they knew we were the better racers. Who's the person that always screenshots my faces? Somebody screenshots my faces, James Bond says that, sends them to me. <laughs> Every I time know. I say something, she always makes I don't faces. know the faces that I make, and sometimes people All are right. like, oh, Diane, we're, we're hanging out. Um, we'll get to the uh, Big Brother tonight. You got, have you been watching Big Brother? No, I have been. Oh, yeah, this is the first time. coming home tonight. It's going to be yeah. an interesting episode tonight. Uh, Either Victor or Tiffany. Bronte's fine. Yeah, I, think, uh, I think Victor. It's time I, for Victor to go. I home. think Tiffany. I, I think feel like get rid of Tiffany. I think they should they should get rid of Tiffany and just replace her in that like eight in the eight pack. But do you want to keep Victor? You have a chance. Get rid of Victor while you can. Yeah, why? He's like he's gonna be a challenge. Yeah, but he's a lone point. wolf. At least like fake him out and be like, yeah, you can be in with us, and then cut him loose when you have to. Lone wolves can make new packs. Yes, all, right. all right. So we'll get, maybe really we'll start a Big it. Brother podcast. No, please, Justin. <laughs> you don't have to be involved in everything. Okay. Okay. All right. I love I love each and every one of you guys for hanging out with us. Thank you for taking time out of your day to spend it with us. I really do appreciate it. What we would appreciate even more is a little like, thumbs up, subscribe, a little sharing. That would help us a lot. Uh, and if you have any constructive criticism on ways we can make the show better, all three of us are available on social media. Everything is in the, the, the thingamajiggy below the description. You can click on it. Uh, so oh, people want us to just chill. Just chill. Well, we are going to Morocco, so if anybody has any Morocco places to go, things to see. El Jadida, Morocco. All right. So that's going to do it, yeah? Ready? yeah? Anybody else got anything before we go? All right. <laughs> Hasta la vista. That's going to do it. I'll see, see you in two weeks. Oh, I do have a question. What? Oh. James Ross, really quick. Uh -oh. <laughs> Put me on the spot. I don't know no, what's no. happening. So we're going to Morocco, and Justin is trying to get me... <laughs> Oh God, we're live. You still no, realize we're live. No, listen. He's trying to get me to say this this thing, <laughs> and I don't know if it's okay to say. He said when people like say hello to you in Morocco, no, they're going to say it's like this Muslim. Uh, like when Muslim people they greet you, a lot of times they'll say "Assalamu alaikum," and all I said was to give her the, the response. "Assalamu alaikum" is like a "peace be with you" or "God be with you" in peace or something like that, and then your your response. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum, salam. So you like respond, it's like, and peace be with you. So it's not, there's nothing wrong with okay. it. First of all, I Googled this and the, it's, they're not even sure if like it's acceptable for non, no, stop, was let me finish. On Wikipedia, okay? I know that's not the most credible, no. but it is pretty credible. Hold on. It wasn't that from it, Morocco, but go ahead. It doesn't matter. It, there was like some iffiness about if non-Muslims should say that back. Like, if I should greet people or even respond back because I'm not Muslim. And I kind of said, like, I, I, I don't know if it's okay to say. Oh, people are saying Justin's right. I, I have a question. I, I love that y'all like to involve me in things. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> I'm trying to get out of here. What in the world made you think we, I was, like, an expert on Moroccan culture? Nothing. No, she just, just trusts your opinion. I do trust your opinion. <laughs> and she likes to have somebody, like, be a judge for our arguments so she can I tell me all I, I love being a judge for your arguments. Trust me. Like, I'll live for it. I, I just, I, I don't know on this one. <laughs> and my other thing is, like, I don't know what that means. Just because you I say just it told means, you what it means. It doesn't matter. It's like if somebody's like, says, God bless you when you sneeze. You can say it to a Muslim. He's not going right. to be offensive. Okay, people that are they call right. their, their God, God as well. Like, it's a God. They're just different names. There's Muhammad, and then and, and there's Jesus, and there's, there's different names. <laughs> Michael Armstead said, the official response is, 
It's happening, bitches. It's happening, bitches. I'm going to say that. I'm gonna All right. That. So, it's happening, bitches. That's going to do it for this episode. We'll see you in two weeks. Races recap. We'll see you in two weeks. Check us out on Facebook Live and Snapchat. Until then, see ya. Bye. Bye.